finding a purpose. While purpose is the reason for which something is done, exist, made, used, etc. It shows that the person has ambitions and is determined to not let the chips just fall. The person has a strategic plan that is well thought out, and adversity won't hinder their intended goal. Because they are willing to adjust when needed and prepare themselves for the worse. Some people are good at finding a purpose, and so their purpose keeps shifting. They rhythmically adjust to new goals that give them vitality according to their choices. However, if you have problems finding your purpose try logotherapy, it is a traditional psychotherapeutic practice. This type of psychotherapy focuses on helping people become aware of the meaning of life. So, they can overcome a crisis that affects them more easily. Science research has shown that a life purpose does affect human mental and physical health, essentially in substantial ways. Studies have shown that intuitively individuals who believe they have found their purpose in life often enjoy a better quality of sleep, which decreases the aging process. In general, there is a direct correlation between enjoying longevity and having a purpose. Discovering the blueprint of your purpose. We tend to choose things that provide a sense of achievement, pleasure, and satisfaction such as planning a career, education, family, financial gains, parties, or travel. While these appear to be routine endeavors that satisfy fleeting and superficial yearnings, they don't sustain. Essentially, they don't leave you with a sense of fulfillment that reflects the purposeful and true destiny. Even though you will need to acquire or further education to help the purpose manifest, it isn't the overall goal. However, this fact is only made clear at the point of a crisis. Sure, crises can be overwhelming, feeling out of control when confronted with demanding or harsh truths. It's moments like these when you tend to feel the most vulnerable. Our basic instinct is to search for answers to cope with the uncertainty. With the unclaimed or unstablished purpose, there are sudden changes that bring about difficult questions. Such as, what went wrong? Am I the only one experiencing this crisis? Will I ever overcome the crisis? When will I find my unique purpose? Why I haven't acknowledged the purpose before now? All these questions arise after the crisis, and then you realize that you need to grasp the significance of your purposeful destiny now more than ever before. Provoked authentic moments such as these can be challenging, which can reveal deeper dimensions of our true nature. Fulfilling answers come when we are open to discovering our authentic, true, and unique purpose. The purpose is something that cannot be duplicated according to your birthright, and genuine thoughts of others and self. However, asking about others' experiences, and then finding solutions through their experiences to cope with pain can make you miss opportunities to fulfill a quest for advancement. Looking deep within the self to shape your connections and gifts will help to withstand crises, to use them as opportunities for growth. Finding a purpose requires long-term relationships that are both affirming and strengthening. Attention to the needs of crucial relationships is the genuine contentment and peace that doesn't come with everyday interaction. Initially, a purpose is something that you make happen, it doesn't just happen. Everyone has intrinsic qualities to manifest according to their birthright and defined thoughts, these are your unique gifts. These gifts enable you to be truly engaged and fulfilled. Fear, unawareness, and the unknown occasionally keeps us from looking within. Sure, the process of manifestation is internal, succeeding by external motivation will make the purpose less likely to manifest. You ought to be driven by your passion and talents and doing it. You can strengthen your voice through the environment and approach your path with integrity. Genuine purpose comes from what is of true value in life. By looking inside, you can assess your innate qualities, the blueprint of the road to fulfillment. Listen to hear the voice of your heart, mind, and soul. Looking within speaks to the human process of awareness and consciousness. Practitioners say that meditation can lead to enlightenment and the true nature of reality. Therefore, Silence the mind from the hectic, noisy, and stimulus-filled days. Stop and wonder, the events or times that you have evaded or ignored silence throughout the day. Have you ever listened to the voice of logic? It understands your true self. It connects to your core soul, it knows your heart, your dislikes, and likes, and it knows what it takes to get you healthy and remain that way. It is the same voice that connects you with others for long-term meaningful relationships. Use all six senses feel, hear, smell, taste, and touch to balance your intuition and discover familiar experiences, get details, and as many as you can. The more experiences you can assess, the more in-depth the purpose could be. Look for your likes and dislikes, while looking for things that you yearn for but have evaded or ignored. Usually, the purpose is something that can keep your attention span, whether daily or occasionally long-term wise. The key variable comes from the past and present, so start looking for meaningful experiences and then check the common attributes that characterize them. Whereas the events and times of past years and recent days and weeks gave you a sense of meaning and motivation. Ask yourself. Who were you with? The task was performed. What goals were accomplished? Why were these experiences meaningful? Find out. What drives you, and makes you want to show compassion? What energizes you, and can increase your integrity? 
What purpose are you willing to do human sacrifice for? How are you willing to help? Don't avoid questions and diverting away from the path of honest and true assessment. After the discoveries, give yourself a self-assessment, to determine whether or not you are currently capable of sticking with these goals. Plan to start, and keep a journal and record the progress. Once you have made progress, share your accomplishments with others. Developing moral character. In social communities, concepts of character include developing virtue in these great attributes, courage, empathy, fortitude, honesty, loyalty, etc. Primarily moral character distinguishes one person from another, and as we know moral behavior is what enables social groups to define and unite their cultural distinction from other social groups. Two moral character or character divulges an evaluation of a person's stable qualities. Generally, moral sense occurs when a person uses the ability to determine the rightness or wrongness of one's actions. And the immoral sense is just the opposite. At which point, the person would be considered a senseless individual. It means the person would rather violate moral principles than conform to patterns of conduct that are usually accepted and established as consistent principles of personal and social ethical values. Using moral character enable a person to naturally want to take responsibility for one's actions, and this way it doesn't feel forced or rehearsed. Embodying moral character traits isn't a matter of luck as most people believe, it has to be developed through righteous guidance and self-control. Moral character has been defined as a disposition to express behavior in consistent patterns of functions across a range of situations. The two moral character has been defined as the sum of one's moral dispositions and habits. Theoretically, leaders should embody and know their moral values. Plato a Greek philosopher between 347 to 427 BC, believed that the soul is divided into three parts of desire, appetitive, rational, and spirited. To have moral character, one must understand what contributes to the overall good and have the appetitive and spirited desires educated properly. To be able to agree with the guidance provided by the rational part of the soul. Moral character is a state concerned with choice, which was believed by Aristotle a Greek philosopher in between 322 to 384 BC, Abraham Lincoln, believed that character is a tree and reputation is its shadow. The tree is the real thing, and the shadow is what you think of it. In the beginning, God created man in his image, and man was then considered good. Since the beginning of time man has fallen short of God's glory, and that means we all have and will, at some point and time or another. No one is perfect, and according to religion, Jesus was the only person found to be perfect in God's eyes. In Christianity character is defined as exhibiting fruits of the Holy Spirit, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, kindness, joy, love, patience, peace, and self-control. And generally, unconsciously using willpower means the person doesn't want to be accountable for actions. They would rather remain in the blame status, the transition of many areas in their life that is held by constant fear and rejection. Sure, there are a lot of concepts, principles, and standards that define and personalize a person's character traits. But without these possible personalized character traits, everyone would become insane and senseless. To develop good behavior you need a reason, and to develop bad behavior you need a selfish reason. So, own what you do and say, and consciously use willpower while pushing through fear and rejection. Building Moral Intelligence in Youth Moral intelligence is the capacity to understand right from wrong, of which a person would have strong ethical convictions, to act and behave in the honorable and right way. Often parents may need to reinterpret the meaning of moral intelligence to self first before development can manifest in youth. Building the virtue of moral intelligence can help the youth model good character. 9 Virtues of Moral Intelligence Conscience You would want to have an inhibiting sense of what is prudent. Unacknowledged conscience can make you appear senseless about your conduct and motives. Structure the context for moral growth interpret the virtues of conscience and guide behavior, and promote moral discipline with youth. Empathy, you would want to be sympathetic. Lack of empathy can make you only identify with one's attitude, feelings, or thoughts and not sympathetic towards others. Promote awareness and a perfected vocabulary, expand sensitivity to feelings of others, and execute empathy for another person's point of view to youth. Fairness, you would want to be clear about the validity of fairness. An unfair nature can make you appear biased, complex and dogmatic toward others. Treat your kids fairly, interpret the significance of behaving fairly, and promote standing up against unfairness and injustice with youth. Forgiveness, you would want to be forgiving to overcome major obstacles and reach higher goals. An unforgivable nature can lower patience and tolerance levels. Interpret and promote forgiveness for others and self to youth. Kindness, you would want to be kind for others to be kind to you. An unkind nature can make you appear unfriendly and unlikable. Interpret and promote the meaning and value of kindness, point out its positive effects, and a zero tolerance for nastiness and meanness with youth. Let go, you would want to let go of past hurt. Past hurt, can hinder moving forward. Interpret and promote overcoming past hurt, by admitting when you were wrong to youth. Talk about past hurt, 
you would want to talk to a counselor or psychiatrist. The past doesn't define a person, but it is something to learn from. Talk to youth about their past or find out how and when the issues affect them the most. Be open and honest by telling them whether you have the same experiences. Talk to youth before consulting a specialist, so they don't feel like you are taking over their life. And then give them time to process the information before, during, and after each evaluation. If the parent has faced the same experiences, they too may need to consult a specialist to overcome and develop and grow together. Respect, you would want to be respectful to elders, parents, and police. A disrespectful nature can make you appear discourteous and senseless. Interpret the meaning of respect by encouraging empathy for the elderly, parents, and police. Interpret courtesy and honorable manners to youth. Self-control, you would want self-control to eliminate uncontrollable situations such as obstruction of justice. Lack of control can make you appear unable to be restrained if you were on the wrong side of the law. Interpret and prioritize self-control and self-motivation, and indicate particular harm and self-harm when dealing with temptations and the significance of thinking before acting and speaking to youth. Tolerance, you would want to be tolerant, one day they may have to raise their kids. Furthermore, you would want to change the cycles of abuse with your kids. Lack of tolerance can make you appear cruel, dogmatic, and hostile. Interpret and promote tolerance from an early age, appreciation for diversity, and promote low tolerance for prejudice to youth. All these aspects of life's formation in this book will help anyone develop and grow, but if I had to choose six general areas for youth, it would be citizens' rights and responsibilities, ethical values, self-help, finding a purpose, moral character, and leader qualities. Nowadays the youth tends to deviate from experiencing courage, especially despite criticism. Cowardice people rise and fall every day through senseless acts, but enough is enough, the youth deserve more from the next generation. 6 Major Life Goals for Youth Today 1. Citizens' Rights and Responsibilities Knowing your rights and responsibilities will enable equality, freedom, and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. 2. It is a duty to work towards becoming a law-abiding citizen, that stands for heroic things such as humanitarianism. 2. Ethical Values Helps build a strengthening foundation that won't be compromised for senseless acts. 3. Self-help Helps a person acknowledge that improvements are needed and purpose in life is possible. Self-help enables a person to push through adversity and experience a better quality of life. 4. Finding a purpose, helps to become aware of the meaning of life, by using unique qualities to help and improve others and self. 5. Moral character, it helps to be able to perceive right from wrong while upholding a structured quality of living. 6. Leader qualities, helps to develop authentic, effective, and perfected communication. Leader qualities. A leader is a person who has developed the ability to lead others, they control, direct, govern, guide or manage a group or stewardship. Most well-educated leaders are business owners or have a position in business administration. Leaders embody authoritativeness and influence others to want to build, change or do business. There are keys to developing leadership qualities, an essential formula of success that cannot be ignored. The key aspects of effective leadership deal with actions, behavior, flexibility, growth, impact, influence, mistakes, people, strength, and vision. Leaders' actions can impact their growth and vision, we all make mistakes, but strength comes from admitting, owning, and then correcting others. As a leader, you can't afford to waste an opportunity to influence others' behavior by guiding them responsibly. Your greatest potential of becoming a leader is revealed through your actions, attitude, and behavior. Lead by contributing your unique talents to the welfare of society and make a positive impact. This is how many people discover prominent leaders' presentations, products, services, and speeches, and basically, this is how they get noticed. The best way to influence is by setting an example. There is always a need for development, and excellent orientation makes a great team. During the hard times, practice what you preach and remember your team members are following you every moment. A leader is someone who faces obstacles with confidence and determination moving forward toward success, which influences team members to stand by their side. Not only do leaders communicate, speaking to the public they set goals and keep them. Discover and coordinate your unique vision, inspire each member of your team with that vision. Your activities can be more meaningful with your vision, so devote effort and time to implementing various tasks toward the realization of your vision. The vision will inspire those people to take action and move forward. Sure, actions do speak louder than words, so avoid wasting time talking about insignificant aspects of the vision it won't be as effective. Simply let everyone see your plan through your actions. Each decision, no matter the situation, must be based on your value system. In certain situations, you may have to choose a different style of communication or leadership. Actions that are value-driven help to build respect and trust with the people around you. As long as flexibility doesn't affect your values, it is a true effective trait. You cannot be a leader with profound goals and skills in an empty room. As a leader, you will engage with people, 
and communication skills are the foundation of effective leadership. For amazing results constantly improve your relationships with people. Life is useless without ongoing improvements. Satisfaction ought to be a short-term feeling since there is always room for growth. And remember, to be thankful for every achievement while doing a little more for the world. Workplace Leadership A leader always seeks to improve themselves, but they have conviction and are tenacious. They listen attentively, speak candidly, and treat others with respect. A leader focuses on the key inputs for business and delivering the right quality, in a timely fashion. They use their instinct with good business judgment and high standards, to create a bold direction that inspires results. A leader is curious about acting on and exploring new possibilities. They operate at all levels, staying connected to audits and details frequently, and are skeptical when anecdote and metrics differ. A leader recognizes exceptional talent and moves them throughout the organization, to raise the performance bar with every hire and promotion. They expect innovation and invention from their team, they benchmark themselves and their team against the best. A leader constantly drives their team to deliver high-quality presentations, products, and services. They know thinking small is a self-fulfilling prophecy, so they find ways to simplify. They think differently by looking around corners for ways to serve customers. A leader is vocally self-critical but is obligated to challenge decisions when they disagree, even when doing so is exhausting or uncomfortable. They ensure that problems are fixed so they stay fixed, and they work to confirm their beliefs with a diverse plan. Despite setbacks, they rise to the occasion and do not compromise for the sake of social cohesion. Once a decision is determined, they commit wholly, and no task is beneath them. Communicating as a leader Effective communication is an essential component of professional success on various levels whether it is external, intergroup, interpersonal, intragroup, or organizational. It is impossible to become a leader without being a great communicator. The subtle elements of communication are rarely taught in a classroom that focuses on others rather than self. One thing great communicators have in common is they possess a contextual awareness and heightened sense of situations. Great communicators are skilled at reading a group slash person by sensing the attitudes, concerns, dynamics, moods, and values of those being communicated to. Appropriately drawing upon said skills while the chips are down is not always easy. The best communicators are astute in their observations while listening. When communicating directly or indirectly through third parties, make sure the message is correct, well-reasoned, substantiated by solid business logic that is accurate, clear, and consistent. Remember the communication won't be about you, your circumstances, opinions, or positions. It will be about helping others, adding value to their world by meeting their needs and understanding their concerns. These communication traits are what make a person an authentic and significant leader. Most leaders spend half of their time in interpersonal situations, and a larger number of organizational problems occur as a result of poor communications. How to know when your skills are mature enough to become a significant leader? Consistent interactions with others ought to meet the 11 principles. 12 Principles of Leader Communication Avoid exaggeration, when you aren't paying attention to what is said, you tend to get annoyed and exaggerate things. If you give the party your undivided attention and read what they are saying, you won't have to exaggerate anything. You don't need to view leading as a license to increase the volume of rhetoric. Body language, a person's chosen words can conflict with their body language. It is the nonverbal cues and unseen language that throws off many interactions. Interpreting body language can give you a real sense of a person's true feelings. When you can read sentiments and thoughts that aren't revealed by the person's words, it gives you a clear advantage. Especially in events such as conducting meetings, delivering presentations, and speeches, during negotiations, or selling products. That can help to master the art and science of personal body language of confidence and honesty to those around you. Reading body language traits in others is just as important as others being able to read significant body language traits in you. 3. Contingency Plan You cannot assume someone knows where you are coming from if you don't tell them. However, don't assume someone wants to have a particular conversation with you, just because the conversation is on your mind. For successful interactions to occur, your objective must be in alignment with those you are communicating with. To prevent the message from going bad, prepare to change a message when needed. Though this happens rarely clarity, empathy, expertise, etc., might not even deliver the desired effect, just be willing to change the message on the fly. Justifying a message with business logic, empathy, and knowledge will eliminate your message falling on deaf ears needing clarification or reinforcement afterward. The change can be something small as a few words or the entire message, this is why you have to be able to read folks. Use analogies, bold statements, humor, questions, and relevant data, research the significant data to stay current. Awe and shock are possible but at last resort. 4. Keep open dialogue, some parties may have dissenting opinions or opposing positions and may even challenge your patients by confronting you. But a closed mind is the single most limiting factor of new opportunities. Take the game to a whole new level by keeping an open mind, and truly understand what's on their mind. 5. 
listen adequately, assume that the greatest form of discourse takes place within a conversation, and not a lecture or monologue. Know when to be quiet or completely shut up altogether and simply listen. 6. Non-transparent ego, most people believe a transparent ego is a way to go. When a transparent ego is like something hiding behind a tree, and just waiting to be unleashed. Any hidden ego can form into arrogance and pride, which can depreciate self-value if you are a salesperson. Therefore, avoid the transparent ego. 7. Personal dialogue, work on organizational conversation, engaging and personal conversations are the most effective. Developing meaningful relationships with people will help to know what's really on their mind before it is too late. 8. Spread your vision, inspire action by aligning expectations and transferring ideas while communicating. Approach each interaction with counterintuitive and a servant's heart. Focus on the other party's desires, needs, and wants. Don't form a personal agenda. Expect to contribute more than you receive to accomplish the goal. 9. Substance over fakery, develop a technical command over your subject matter, to know what you're talking about. Add value to a situation or topic, don't just force yourself into a conversation to hear yourself speak. As a leader, you won't have time to be fake. Faking it until you make it isn't something to be influenced by. Real leaders work diligently to have their presentation, product, service, and speech all intact. 10. Tailored message, since leaders don't have time to speak to individuals in an intimate setting, speak to groups as individuals. Tailor the message as if you are speaking to 10 people in a conference room or 10,000 people in an auditorium. So, it feels as if you were speaking directly to each individual. Work to establish credibility, rapport, and trust of which are keys to successful interactions. 11. Target significant points, weed out the superfluous to make your words count, and communicate with clarity. Reach granular levels of concerning and complicated conversation that most people know is significant but wouldn't think to disclose. 12. Trustworthiness, speaking as though you have a forked tongue won't open the hearts of people you communicate to. You would want people to sense that it is possible to invest time and take a risk with you. To build a good character with others, keep a good reputation that lacks integrity. Actively earn the group or person's trust. Trust must be present, you can't demand it. Forms of communication. While communication is the interchange of opinions, thoughts, or information by signs, speech, and writings. Either of which can be translated with video through telecommunication networks. So, it is wise to enhance your speech, video, and writing skills. Speech, deviating from accepted speech standards can reveal poor speech habits. You ought to be able to comprehend the message you convey. The worst case scenario is that you have a lot of repeat sentences in your message. In which case, simply download a text-to-voice application, to hear and practice your speech, and re-edit bad grammar. Video, how you present yourself in the video is significantly important, which involves appearance, body language, and speech. The production and quality of the video may also enhance the performance that you project to others. Writing, it is important to be able to write well on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't hire someone every time you need to write a company document or email. Nowadays it isn't necessary to pull out an English grammar textbook, to be concise and direct when writing a message. Authors generally remove unneeded words throughout their messages because it is possible to say a lot with fewer words. Sentence examples. Sentence A, there will be a meeting in the conference room today around noon just after lunch. Modified sentence A, today there will be a meeting after lunch in the conference room. Sentence B, our team will be getting together tonight at Jen's house to plan tomorrow's strategies for luring new customers. Modified sentence B, there will be a mandatory meeting at Jen's house tonight, to plan for new customers. Sentence C, our company CEO will be giving the Employee of the Month award out in the meeting in the conference room today. Modified sentence C, the Employee of the Month award will be given out today in the conference room meeting. Overall view of senseless illiterate and insane. Nowadays many arguments and confrontations stem from ethical norm standards. Ethical norms help make life a little easier when you are raised with them. Diverting from ethical norms can diminish a family structure, to a point of each family member giving up on life altogether. Thereafter, the person is living but living through an out-of-body experience. People who are against ethical norms tend to hold their family and friends accountable to ethical norms. And sure, no one wants to be judged and looked down on when their family didn't raise them with ethical norms. With the next generation, it is possible to teach ethical norms, so the youth don't end up going down the wrong path looking for a strong foundation.